Hello, good morning. This week's uh, Inner Circle update. Uh, we'll start off with FX. Um, Tuesday was really the key day uh, in that it looked like <coughs> the dollar was attempting to break up. You can see it made that daily close based on payroll <coughs> on the previous Friday. And then on Tuesday, we got a reversal signal, that little blue arrow with a timing point. And we simply drifted back down. Um, it now remains uh, the case that we need a daily close above that recent high from the week before. Um, the other thing to note is the fact that weekly support has risen. So now we have a very powerful zone from 95.31 to 18. Um, get a daily close below there, then that would suddenly open up the downside. Um, you've also got to remember that the rest of the market will probably still think that we're in sideways, uh, but we won't be. Um, we'll suddenly have opened up space uh, to fall a considerable distance, uh, possibly. So um, pretty condensed, um, very clear boundaries. On to Euro dollar. Not surprisingly, uh, as always, it's the opposite. Um, we did actually get the, the first sign of a problem on the Monday in that we had a bullwhip signal, that uh, blue square there, uh, then a timing point the following day, and we've moved back in. Uh, we're bang smack in the middle of the range in terms of spot. There isn't really anything close to get our teeth into, so uh, we'll have a quick look at the futures and see if there's anything there. Um, not really either. Um, from a from a bullish point of view, what we need is if any pullback holds 113.58, uh, it's going to have to do it pretty much to the tick, uh, otherwise I'm not overly interested in it. There is some room for it to rally, so again you have that reference on the dollar index and there's nothing in the way on the euro as such. Move on to the pound. Pretty volatile week, not surprisingly, with all the nonsense going on. Um, ultimately, we've uh, effectively held the breakout point at 132.17, we went a little bit below it on Friday, held it pretty much perfectly on Thursday. Uh, so the upside is there. Again, it's worth looking at the futures just to make sure. And it's a pretty similar picture, isn't it? Um, again, it's held the breakout point. Uh, there's going to be some big votes this week. Uh, plenty of room on the upside, that's for sure. So uh, certainly no reason to be short. That's the, the key takeaway there. Uh, might as well go on to the Euro Pound actually, because that's been pretty volatile as well. In fact we'll do the Pound Crosses with the Pound looking mildly bullish. Um, the reason I'm showing you the Euro Pound is over the last couple of years, every time we've sort of broken out of the top or below the bottom, it's always been a false break. It's never actually managed to hold it. And um, we've had a difference over the last couple of weeks in that we've held below this final weekly support, as it were. You know, we've ebbed either side of it, but um, effectively we're accepting value. Um, normally, whenever we've gone above or below, it hasn't stayed there for very long. Now we've been there for over two weeks. So Euro Pound is looking bearish, uh, reinforces that poor uh, bullish view on the pound really. Um, downside target 83.14. Let's just have a quick look at all the pound crosses while we're here. So if we do the pound Aussie, there we go. Uh, had a buy signal on Wednesday, it's holding value above that final weekly level. So again, that's in a, a bullish setup. Pound Kiwi. Uh, buy on Wednesday again. Not much in the way of reference points. Everything's a long way away, but uh, it's a buy signal, so again, bullish to a certain extent. Let's do Pound Swiss. Not one that's tradable. But again, um, it's hanging in there, isn't it? And Pound Yen. Should we do Pound CAD as well? Pound yen. Wow, 
very confused signal on Tuesday, didn't we? Had a sell and a buy on the same day. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, tells you that the market doesn't have a clue what it wants to do. But that's also bullish. It's above its weekly level, and there is no resistance at all. Um, I actually remember that 241 from many years back. Um, so that's bullish. Uh, and pound CAD. It's also holding above its weekly support. We've had plenty of negative signals, but uh, not really getting anywhere with them. Um, so the takeaway there is the pound is bullish. Absolutely no doubt about that. Let's move back to the majors. Aussie dollar. It's been pretty quiet. Uh, very quiet week, really. We've had a minor buy signal on Friday. Uh, the key takeaway is the fact that the monthly level that's been a big reference for 71.59 for a long, long time is going to move to the lows at 67. Um, we've also had resistance move down to 73.94, so um, pretty quiet there. Kiwi. Also pretty quiet. Had a buy signal the week before. We stopped at the monthly level, not surprisingly. Dollar yen. Also, not a lot going on. Finally, dollar CAD. Uh, we had a negative on the Friday uh, after payroll, but of course, it was coming into that monthly support. Uh, we finally took that out on Tuesday and we sort of drifted last, so uh, pretty quiet there. So, all in all, it's all about the pound. Um, that's where all our interest lies. Right, let's move on to commodities.